Now, sometime this week, officially it's now said to be Saturday, Colonel John Glenn of the United States Marines hopes to be the first American to orbit the Earth in space. His journey will begin at what they call a launching pad on that narrow, sandy peninsula, Cape Canaveral in Florida. Cape Canaveral, which has become one of the best-known strips of land in the whole world in this space age. Robert Key reports now from the new city which has sprung up on Cape Canaveral, Cocoa Beach. And that's tonight's fishing report from Cocoa and Cocoa Beach, your saltwater trout capital of the world. And it won't be long until John Glenn will make that trip to the space capsule. And here to help him along is some music. Someone's called the area around Cape Canaveral a government-controlled Disneyland, but this is a superficial, misleading view. What's happened here, quite apart from the space project, is a most serious piece of American workaday achievement. If some of what you see and hear at Cocoa Beach seems absurd, well, every nation lapses sometimes into caricature when being most seriously itself. Ten years ago, there was little in this part of Florida but orange groves, alligators and rattlesnakes. Now, land has rocketed to as much as 1,500 pounds an acre. This salesman will take you up his specially built observation tower and sell you an acre of the future space capital for as little as four pounds down and four pounds a month for eight years. He gets inquiries from all over the world. We here at Canaveral Grove Estates feel that we have the greatest thing for the small investor due to the fact that we are on the verge of a population explosion. Uh, we feel that there is nothing but money can be made here. Uh, things like the man into space and uh, the moonshot which are taking place in this area greatly enhances the value of property. Down there live many other ordinary Americans, and these think more of the present than of the glittering future. Some even dream of the past. All think a good deal about the astronaut, Colonel Glenn, who, in a superversion, is really just another workaday American like themselves. I'll be down on a beach watching the shot. Glenn taking his chances. He'll be taking a big chance to risk his life for the rest of the world. Well, it doesn't matter how many missiles we see go up, uh, we still run out and watch them. I mean, there's something that's real thrilling and exciting about them. Uh, and you know there's something that's going up. But yet, um, when uh, there's a man in there, why, you get a, I, you have a different feeling. I can't exactly describe it, but you, uh, you just get a big lump in your heart or something. I don't mean your tears and things and uh, we all pray for him. Being in the grocery business, more or less, we take everything for granted here, but we are much interested in what's going on. And also we believe that the uh, first man gets on the moon, it'll be a great, if it's in the United States, it'll be a great benefit to our country because I believe that we are running out of minerals to uh, keep this earth going and that we will find the minerals that we need on the moon and also that would be strategically, militarily to our benefit to be there first. We feel like the scientists, the scientists uh, feel that he is definitely safe and we uh, feel that uh, he's safe, but there's always that possibility that, uh, and we feel that maybe there's, he's, something could go wrong. And as the time comes near to the countdown, we all, it all seems to get very quiet and uh, especially at the Cape, everything quietens down. And in the surrounding areas in the town, like right here, there is an amount of tension that mounts up while the countdown proceeds. I'm gonna take a trip in my rocket ship. We'll have a lovely afternoon. Kiss the world goodbye and away we fly. Destination moon. The man who built this part of the future space capital, 
and made a great deal of money out of doing so, is a former American Air Force sergeant. And his responsibility for his achievements rests on him seriously. For him, as perhaps for that other American in the rocket, this is the American dream going into orbit, where the sky is no longer the limit. Well, as one of the pioneers of this area, how do you feel about the man going up in that rocket? Well, I would say this. It's a, a rather somber feeling that not only myself, but I think all of our area residents feel if we're on the threshold of sending Colonel Glenn up three times around the Earth. We know that Russia has already uh, done this, but this is the United States of America where we know it to be a fact. We're going to see it with our own eyes. Do you feel yourself with your work here, your development of the property here, to be in some way part of the whole project over there, would you say? I kind of like to think so. I know when I first started out here, I uh, could look north, south, east, and west for miles and see nothing. And of course, you can see how we're built up at this point. And being a part and parcel of the entire area, uh, and knowing that the vital part that we are playing in the defense of not only of the United States of America, but of the entire world, you feel kind of maybe insignificant, like over a little pebble on this beach. A few miles from Cocoa Beach, the mood is different. The Atlas booster rocket is almost ready, and the man whose name is in everyone's mind, Colonel Glenn, keeps a personal eye on every stage of the work, including the maneuvering of the 100-foot rocket into its position on the launching pad. The Mercury capsule, similar to those already used by the previous American spacemen, should take Glenn on an orbit of the Earth 150 miles up. No one yet knows how many orbits he'll make, but the maximum will be three. Colonel Glenn, aged 40, and a Marine officer with a distinguished flying record, is the oldest in the team of American astronauts. On his first trip into space, he won't have much to do with the actual control of the craft, but he'll be kept busy keeping a log and reporting regularly back to Earth. Throughout his journey, a complex series of stations will be tracking and plotting and noting down everything from his voice to the beat of his heart. How does this astronaut feel now that his journey is so near? Even a spaceman can relax now and then. And certainly, Colonel Glenn seemed relaxed enough when he talked to the BBC's Eric de Morning. Colonel Glenn, what made you decide to become an astronaut? Well, that's a good question, I guess. Uh, I think it was probably in the forefront of our profession, more or less. It was a natural, uh, a natural progression from the line of work that the seven of us were involved in. We were all military test pilots, and uh, I guess the prerequisites for a military test pilot were about the same as they were looking for for uh, prerequisites for astronauts. Well, how do you personally feel about the forthcoming flight? Does the prospect cause you any alarm? Not alarmed, no. I, I look forward to it with uh, a great deal of anticipation, in fact. Uh, we've had a, a long build-up program to this. We've learned a lot about it. And I think uh, the more you learn about something, the less apprehensive you are of it. I was going to say, you have learned quite a bit from the preceding flights of Commander Shepard and, and uh, uh, of uh, Captain Grissom and the Russian oh, sure. These, these things are all just like, they're like rungs on a ladder, I guess. You, uh, you start with a certain level of information on the ground, and uh, we learn from Al's shot. We learn more from Gus Grissom's shot. Uh, I hope that I will add some to this knowledge of our, in this new exploration. And uh, undoubtedly, uh, when this one comes off, then they'll use my information as another rung on the ladder to longer flights or more ambitious flights. So it's a, it's a progression that goes on continually. Could I come to a rather personal question? I, I believe, Colonel, sure. you're 40, and uh, that this is normally considered a, a, a rather advanced age for supersonic flight. Uh, well, this, this 40 business I've been asked about quite a bit recently uh, since I had a birthday last summer, and uh, uh, I really don't attach much importance to it myself. Uh, I guess you're as old as you... Uh, feel and act, maybe, I don't know. Uh, perhaps that leaves me <laughs> too young, I don't know. But uh, anyway, I don't really, this uh, idea that you're suddenly supposed to go through some mystical change because you had a birthday of 40, I just don't buy at all. 
Thank goodness there's someone who's not too old at 40 anyway. Colonel Glenn ready to go and a brave man. Saturday's the date at the moment.